Let's take back the galaxy from the Corpse Emperor's followers, because today we're doing an overview of the Chaos Space Marines army in Warhammer 40k. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today we're talking Chaos Space Marines, and I thought we'd do a full overview of the army in current Warhammer 40k, talking about some of the strongest picks within the Codex, and what are the highlights and low points of the book at the moment. We'll start out by talking about their army performance and the strengths and weaknesses in current 40k, move on to look through their core faction rules, some of the strongest rules out of each section in the army, and talk through their units, allies, and a few example army lists at the end. Loads to cover, so let's talk mutants, heresy, and demon engines. So currently in Warhammer 40k, Chaos Space Marines aren't doing too badly to be honest, they have been waiting for an update for the vast majority of 9th edition, Though I feel that the codex that they got was a pretty decent one, a fair amount of support for each of the legions, and also being strong enough to tangle with the best things in 40k. Perhaps in a fairly good spot, strong but not oppressive in tournaments, though I must admit a fair amount of data sheets in the book are a little bit underpowered, and the codex does have its winners and losers. Currently their win percent in Warzone Nephilim is 50%, demons might well have helped them a little bit towards the end by allying in flamers and things, but they have been doing pretty well even before demonic allies were a possibility. At the top end of tournament tables, they've been doing pretty well as well. They've won 20 grand tournaments in Nephilim so far, and their various legions have placed pretty highly in a whole load of others. At the very top tier of Chaos Space Marines, it does seem that Emperor's Children and Creations of Bile are maybe carrying the faction a bit. The vast majority of big event wins are from one of those, though most of the others do have at least something interesting going for them, and they currently are the most played codex in Nephilim, unless you're counting all the individual Space Marine supplements as one. For some of the strongest parts of the Codex, I'd say that their Brutal Melee units in particular are very very good. There's plenty of usable options for the battle line in that role, whether it's Terminators, Chosen, Possessed or Warp Talons, particularly with things like stacking buffs on Chosen or Terminators, with things like a Dark Apostle with Illusory Supplication, and a Master of Possession giving them healing. The HQ section in itself is just very very strong as well, lots of solid picks there, and I feel like their Warlord traits and relics are particularly impressive as well, with some massive boosts to melee characters. The legions definitely have a bit of differentiation, they will push you in different ways to build different lists within the codex which is quite nice, and Abaddon the Despoiler as well I think deserves a special mention, he's an enormously powerful model, and can slot in very nicely to any of the legions if you want to with his current rules. As for weaknesses of the army, I would say that limited good ranged units is perhaps one to point a finger at, a few can be alright, things like Noise Marines or Rubric Marines, but the majority is just a touch on the underwhelming side. A lot of their units have kind of okay toughness, but nothing particularly special by 9th edition. The Terminators when buffed up can be a total anvil, but for most of the rest of the units, zooming their way around the board, usually damage 2 or 3 weapons with AP-2 or AP-3 will cause some pretty heavy casualties very quickly. Their secondary objectives, I'd say, are fairly bad as well, compared with the majority of other factions. Not completely unusable, but a bit low yield. And I feel like perhaps Warzone Nephilim doesn't get on amazingly well with the Codex for them. They want to ideally run a lot of HQs with upgrades, often wanting to spend just about all their CP pre-game on the excellent Warlord traits and relics that they have, so it does mean that you have to make some hard choices as to what you bring. Overall though, certainly a solid army at the moment, and have some fun and scary units within the book. Let's start off with some of their core rules though, and perhaps one of the most notable ones is Let the Galaxy Burn. This one's the pure army one that you get if you don't bring any allies along, or at least allies that don't have some sort of exemption to this, as we'll cover. Perhaps the major part of it is the Exploding Sixes. On turn 1, any attacks with heavy weapons, rapid fire or grenades get Exploding Sixes to hit. In Massacre, you get the same for rapid fire assault weapons and pistols on turn 2 and 3 if you want it. So I think most likely most Chaos lists will usually want to go into Wanton Slaughter on turn 3. That one gets you with the Exploding Sixes to hit on Assault, Pistol or Melee weapons. Melee in particular is pretty nice for the Chaos Marines, as it tends to be where most of their big damage is to be had. Overall it's quite a nice little damage boost that will just reward you as you go ahead, and particularly on getting into combat late in game. And on top of that, as Flamers don't benefit from any of the rest of them, they get a nice damage boost whenever they fire against anything. They get an extra 2 hits on the enemy whenever they target them, meaning that things like combi flamers and heavy flamers pack just a bit more of a punch than elsewhere, though I feel like it maybe really comes into its own on units that weren't really costed with that in mind, say for example the Rubit Marines and their warp flamers. Overall definitely a nice to have, I feel like it maybe won't often change your playstyle too much, but will rack up a bit more damage over the course of the game, and particularly when you get into melee on turn 3. Otherwise, the army's got a whole bunch of other core faction rules, things that make the army function. 
Their objective rules give you objective secured for troops, including things like cultists, accursed cultists, and the traitor guardsmen. Quite a nice bonus that, as the Death Guard and the Thousand Sons don't get that, and it can be quite nice for things like Emperor's Children getting objective secured on their Noise Marines. Armour of Contempt is the rule from the Balance Data Slate. This one worsens the enemy AP of any attacks that they make by one, meaning that the whole army is particularly good at warding off AP-1 weapons. It's perhaps most effective when you have things like 2 plus armour save units in cover like Terminators, where you might even be tanking AP-3 shots on a 3 plus. Malicious Volleys is the rule in the Codex for basically Chaos Space Marine Bolter Discipline. You get to rapid fire bolters at 24 inches if you're stationary, or on the move if you're a biker or a Terminator. Maybe it's most meaningful for Terminators firing out a whole bunch of anti-horde shots with their combi bolters. Not too bad for things like Legionaries to chip in just a little bit of anti-horde damage while they're sat on objectives though. There's a fair few demon engines within the codex. They have their own set special rules with a 5 plus invul and regenerating one wound each turn. And they also allow you to access stratagems for a plus one to hit with demon forge or minus one damage if they need it for one CP. Definitely makes the demon engines just a little bit more threatening, though I do feel that they're kind of priced with the bonuses in mind. I'd say out of all of them, the Venom Crawler's probably the most interesting, a few of the others are just a bit lacklustre. Chaos Marines have a couple of army construction rules. In each detachment, you can only take up to one Chaos Lord, Demon Prince, and Dark Commune. I'd say that in general, for the strongest list around, it's probably the Demon Prince limits that's the only one that matters too much. Chaos Lords and Dark Communes have their merits, but they're certainly not the sort of thing that you'd want to spam. Demon Princes, though, are quite a good focal point for big relics and traits and things. I think at least some lists might be tempted to run multiple if you could take multiple in a detachment. As well as that, if you want to run Cultists, you must have equal or more core choices than Cultists, and you can't have a Cultist Warlord if you're taking a mixed detachment with Chaos Marines. Again, probably not really the biggest deal, really. Most people, I don't think, are going to want to spam nothing but Cultists, in general, you want to load up on a bunch of elite damage dealers to complement a few objective securing chaff troops. Finally, cult marines have a few restrictions on them. You can field corn berserkers from the White Dwarf Index, rubric marines and play marines from the Thousand Sons and Death Guard codexes. Noise marines are the only ones that have the data sheet in the book, and all of these guys must be upgraded to their own mark, and they never get a legion trait. It definitely is a bit of a downside for taking them outside of their main legion. I feel that the data sheets are still strong enough to be at least usable outside of them. Perhaps particularly Rubik Marines out of any of them. They want flamers and let the galaxy burn kind of carrying them to some massive damage. Another mechanic that's kind of a core one that appears throughout the codex are the marks and icons that several units can take. This one's basically the Chaos Space Marine points cost upgrade. And you can upgrade any core or character unit that isn't already god dedicated to either be Korn, Slanet, Zinch, or Nurgle, and again the buff for getting the mark. Cultists are excluded from all this, Psychers can't be Korn, Demon Princes must buy a mark of one sort or another, and Emperor's Children and World Eaters units must upgrade to either Slanesh or Korn respectively. These upgrades do often give you some pretty powerful things though, and perhaps one of the most relevant things is gaining the relevant gods keyword, relevant for certain stratagems and powers and things, and that's kind of similar for the characters, the priests will know an extra prayer, and the psychers get to know an extra power, some of which are really quite good. Each of the units also gains a buff, Korn gets plus one strength in the first round of melee, that one's quite nice for strength four things like legionaries in particular, getting a whole bunch of strength five chainsword attacks is pretty cool. Nurgle gets minus 1 to wound if the enemy was wounding on a 2 plus or 4 plus initially. Sometimes quite big, a lot of the time might be a bit meaningless though if they were already wounding on a 3 plus to start with. Zeech gets to ignore the first failed save each turn and it becomes damage 0. That's really quite a powerful one and can potentially save a whole bunch of damage on a unit, particularly if it survives to get attacked again, and it gets to negate yet more damage. Finally, Slanesh gives you fights first, which is quite nice in itself. It means that in ongoing combats, you'll get the edge and to interrupt, and it can be pretty problematic for the opponent charging things as well. If they resolve one combat with one Slanesh marks unit, you should be able to strike next with the next one. Probably out of the marks, I would say that Slanesh probably has the biggest relevance within the Codex though. Arguably the unique power and the unique prayer are the best two for Slanesh. Delightful Agony is giving you a 5 plus feel no pain, and the prayer can let you advance and charge, both of which are really good things for say a big Terminator Death Star. Perhaps other interesting uses could be to unlock the god-specific demon weapon for a character, say for example taking Nurgle to get Golax, or perhaps to be able to use certain stratagems on a unit, say for example marking Havocs to be Slanesh, so you can use their stratagem to make one damage roll an automatic 6. 
Then on top of that, you gain another buff if you can take an icon in the unit. These ones are a lot more restricted though, things like legionaries, bikers and chosen being the main ones. Plus I think the noise marines, these ones give you a further buff for just 5 points within the squad, so I think they're usually worth it if you are upgrading the unit to a mark anyway and you can take one. Corn gets you extra AP, which is pretty nice with strength 5, a whole bunch of strength 5 AP minus 2 chainsaw hits isn't too bad from legionaries. Nurgle and Zinch both give you some small ranged boosts, could be okay on things like bikes I suppose. Nurgle gets 6s to hit auto wound and Zinch improves AP by minus 1. Slanesh though gives you plus 1 to hit in melee, which again is a very very nice buff, certainly a very nice one to have on Chosen with their accursed weapons. Overall I feel like a fair few of these are usable, particularly Slanesh for delightful agonies, though all of the rest can have their advantages. I probably wouldn't go upgrading every single unit to have one of these though. There's a bunch of core choices that just aren't really too fussed about the buff that they'd get, so it might just be best to leave it alone. Moving on, let's take a look through some of the other stronger rule sections of the Codex, and we'll start out with Warlord Traits, then Relics. I feel like for the power of Codex Chaos Space Marines, the Warlord Traits and Relics are a really, really strong section, and on top of that, a bunch of the Legions have their own great ones to compete with the very good generic ones. I'd typically be wanting to buy in a few extra ones if I was making a Chaos Army. For the standard Warlord traits, I feel like Flames of Spites might be perhaps the strongest. Melee hits get to reroll their wound rolls, and 6s to wound also deal one mortal wound, which just adds up to awesome melee damage out of most things, just with the combination of those two rules, but is particularly nice on things like Lord Discordance, which hit with a whole bunch of mid-strength attacks. Likely means that you're probably getting a few 6s out of that, never mind all the regular damage it does. Otherwise, Hatred Incarnate is quite nice, plus 1 strength and plus 1 attack if you charged or heroically intervened, plus the character gets to re-roll their hit rolls as well, really very nice in combination with the Nurgle Demon Relic Golax in particular, that thing auto wounds and ignores damage caps and feel no pain, so getting extra attacks and almost guaranteeing the hit roll is pretty potent in combination. Unholy Fortitude gives you a 5 plus feel no pain, which is just generally useful on characters that you don't want to die. Several of the legions also have a direct upgrade for this, combining this with an extra special rule as well. And as mentioned, there's plenty of other warlord traits out of the various different legions, which we'll touch on briefly later. Moving on to relics, and as mentioned, there's a whole ton of good choices, perhaps even more so than the warlord traits. The demon weapons are all quite fun, they do come with a small risk. You need to test 2d6 versus leadership, and if you fail it, then you've got the choice between either taking some mortal wounds yourself, or just not using the demon weapon that turn. Usually though, Chaos Space Marine leaders will have enough leadership to trigger that very reliably, and while all of them I think are okay, I feel like Golax and Alok of the Black are probably the two most interesting. Golax is the one that just auto wounds against the enemy, and ignores things like feel no pains and damage caps, meaning that it's pretty massive for taking out things like Abaddon the Despoiler or enemy Catan. Really tempting to have that on a damage 3 Nurgle Demon Prince weapon. Alok of the Black makes just about any weapon just that little bit nastier, an undivided one where each wound dealt counts as one mortal wound. That one's pretty nice when you're using it with something like Flames of Spite, which already guarantees you're going to be getting a fair amount of successful wounds with the reroll. Just about auto-include in every single Chaos Space Rune list at the moment is the Black Rune of Damnation. This one, Games Workshop decided to allow Chaos players to take on a unit as well, and it gives the entire unit a minus one to wound debuff, making it just very obvious to take this on a really big unit of possessed or terminators and have them be far more survivable than you'd expect. It absolutely makes sense to have this on at least one of your squad champions, and it even messes with enemy psychic a bit as well. A lot of the others I think are very worth taking, but maybe just a few picks of the rest of them it could be the Gorget of Eternal Hate, a plus one to saves, a four plus invul, and some mortal wounds on death. I feel like that's quite nice on a Lord Discordant who has the two plus save already. The Mantle of Traitors allows you to re-roll hit rolls and a zero command point epic deed. That's maybe particularly relevant if your Legion has a good epic deed that you might want a character to do. In particular, the Emperor's Children one for making enemies fight last does seem like a very good target. The Intoxicating Elixir is a Selenesh one, which once per game gives you an extra d3 attacks, and you can't take more than 3 wounds in damage that phase, basically guaranteeing that you survive until the next time to attack, or you guarantee that you live until you get to strike, and get to hit the enemy very hard. Finally, the Liber Hereticus is a really nice one. This one allows you to cast an extra power, and you get plus 6 inch range. The extra power could just be Smite, but it's pretty nice with marked spells as well, things like Delightful Agonies, so say you could have a Master of Possession doing two great buffs, and also giving out a 5 plus feel no pain. Overall, really great relics and warlord traits here, to the extent where Chaos players are kind of spoilt for choice. Flames of Spite and Hatred Incarnate are excellent for different Smash characters, 
as are the demon weapons. The Black Druid is basically auto includes. The Liber Hereticus is amazing for a Psyker, and a lot of the rest are very strong as well. Moving on, let's talk sorcery with some psychic powers. There's two different disciplines in Codex Chaos Space Marines, and as mentioned, you get the god specific ones as well if you have that god's mark. After the two, I feel that there's perhaps more raw value in the Malefic Discipline over the Dark Hereticus one, but the Dark Hereticus is useful. I'd say perhaps more so on things like Acolytes with Balefire Tomes in Legionaries and Demon Princes, maybe more so than actually taking a Sorcerer. On Dark Hereticus, you've got a plus one to hit, which is pretty nice to use in a Legionary squad. Death Hex to strip enemy invuls, which can be big against certain foes. Diabolic Strength for plus two attacks on plus two strength. That one's very nice on a Demon Prince. And Warp Time, which allows you to move again, but you can't charge. That one's quite nice on the Aspiring Sorcerers within a Rubric Marine unit to get them into place. Overall, they're generally all quite interesting, though I suspect that you're better off taking them in the various other places that you could take them, as opposed to on an actual Sorcerer most of the time. I feel like the Malefic Discipline, though, is on a bit of an extra level with the raw value that you can get out of it. In particular, Pact of Flesh is a spectacularly potent spell. You get to heal D3 wounds on one model in a squad, and also resurrect another from the dead with four wounds remaining. And I feel that, again, this one is borderline auto-include within a Chaos list. You're going to get some good value out of it. Perhaps the most obvious one is just resurrecting and healing a very tanky Terminator squad with all the stacking durability boosts. And the resurrected model can actually give you some charge threat range. Set it up at the front of the unit, and you're likely to get a shorter charge with it later in the turn. Otherwise, though, you could potentially use it to heal Abaddon the Despoiler. Pretty powerful with him, given his damage caps. In theory, you could be getting a crazy amount of points of obliterators back to the board each turn if you had a depleted unit. When you're resurrecting a full 90-point model per turn and healing another, that's pretty crazy. And it could also allow you to cast your powers more reliably, potentially using Sacrifice on a nearby unit to get the bonus to cast and then just heal the unit straight back up, as if you never stabbed them with a big dagger. That one can even be used to do gamey charges out of reserve and things. Potentially have a unit arrive from Deep Strike Reserve, you sacrifice multiple times to try and kill a model, and then you resurrect the model with Pact of Flesh a bit closer to the enemy, reducing their charge distance. Very, very good all around, and will probably be my first choice of powers on that discipline. Otherwise though, the remaining powers all remain very good. Mutated Invigoration gives you either plus one strength or plus one toughness, or both if you cast them on a big 10 plus on Demonkin. Particularly nice, I think, for the extra toughness on a big Terminator unit with the Black Rune of Damnation. It means that strength 4 attacks will be wounding the unit on a 6 plus. You can also switch into damage dealing mode if it makes more sense. Otherwise, Cursed Earth gives you a 4 plus Invul Aura. Very nice on things like Possessed, as well as giving you a bit of charge and defense and mortal wounds to enemies getting close. Infernal Power is a pretty solid melee boost. 6 is to hit Auto Wound. And warp marks means that demon kin and demon engines get plus one to wound on one target. Perhaps a particularly nice one if you want to try and make obliterators work. Overall, it's just a very, very strong discipline. Lastly, for the god specific powers, as mentioned earlier, five plus feel no pain from Slanesh's delightful agonies is pretty amazing. Perhaps best on the three wound units like Terminators and Chosen, which, as we mentioned, can already get lots of stacking toughness boosts. Otherwise, the Zinch and Nurgle ones, if you want to build around them, can get a 4 plus inball save or a minus 1 to hit from a unit, neither of which are particularly bad durability boosts, though not quite as good as the Sanesh one, at least in my opinion. Overall, definitely a very solid psychic section for the Codex. Perhaps Pact of Flesh and Delightful Agonies might be the two most important spells out of any of these, but any of these on here I think are very justifiable depending on what units that you're trying to buff. In a similar vein, we've also got Prayers to the Dark Gods. These ones are the Dark Apostle chants that they get, usually casting on a 2+, and they typically affect Legion Core, Cultists, and Character Units, typically targeting the biggest things are going to be best. Out of all these, Illusory Supplication tends to be the one that a lot of people like running. One unit within 6 inches gets the rule where hit rolls of a 1-3 to three always fail against this target, and you can't re-roll those hit rolls either. This one cuts the damage of just about anything in 40k shooting at them, unless they hit on a 4 plus without re-rolls already. Very painful for big enemy units that are likely going to be getting high ballistic skill and buffed re-rolls. Yet another important piece of the big stacking durability things that you can do with Chosen and Terminators. Otherwise, for a second pick, I feel like most of these are generally usable. The standard Dark Zealotry one gives you a melee boost, particularly later in the game that might be more meaningful than the durability, so you could switch to that. Benediction of Darkness could give you a light cover boost rather than the transhuman to hit thing. That could be good against armies that have, say, bad ballistic skill like orcs, but you still want durability. 
Omen of Potency can make the priest a lot more fighty, an extra 3 attacks and AP-2 improvement in melee, though the AP bits doesn't work on relics. Still though, plus 3 attacks can make a Dark Apostle actually surprisingly fighty when you give him some other boosts, and it isn't terrible to have a backup to Illusory Supplication if you need another one. Otherwise, Warp Sight Plea can help out ranged attacks, maybe it depends on whether or not you've got a unit that's really worth buffing the range of, and Soul Terror Portent is another very nice one for amping up combat, a plus one to wound in melee. For the god specific ones, again it kind of depends on whether you've gone marks on any of the units. As mentioned before, again I do think that Slaness is probably the most interesting out of them, allowing one unit to advance and charge, pretty massive on Chaos Space Marines, and again on things like Chosen and Terminators that are quite punchy in melee but move slowly. Out of the others, I feel like Feculent Beseechment for a plus one toughness from Nurgle is a pretty usable one as well, particularly if it's getting you to toughness five. Overall, Dark Apostles are another really solid choice. Illusory Supplication, I think, is the biggest bang for your buck that you can get out of them, but there's lots of solid fallback options if there's a turn where it doesn't make sense to use that, and Word Bearers can potentially make things even more interesting by being able to use two Litanies with one Apostle every turn. Stratagems next, and I would argue that perhaps they aren't one of the strongest parts of the Codex. Plenty of stuff that's usable, but maybe not all that much that stand out. Perhaps another thing that encourages Chaos players to spend as many CP as possible pre-game. I'd say one of the most simple and effective ways of getting value out of them is just Veterans of the Long War, a plus one to wound for an infantry or barky unit when attacking the enemy. Using that on some big scary units can certainly give you some bang for your CP. Otherwise there's one for a transhuman physiology rule on a Nurgle unit, potentially useful if you want to downgrade that 3 plus to wounds to a 4 plus. Scorn of Sorcery can make having a Corn Marks unit kind of interesting, a 1 CP to turn off a power on a 4 plus can be quite big. There's a 1 CP one for bolt weapons to gain an extra AP minus 1 and plus 6 inch range, maybe not too bad when you've got loads of bolt shots in a unit like Terminators. The Demon Engine ones for minus 1 damage and plus 1 to hit, both of which are 2 CP on Titanics. They can be efficient enough, particularly the minus 1 damage one if you're being hit by a load of damage 2 attacks. And there are a couple of useful ones for shooting while you're doing actions or advancing. Maybe not the best trade-off for damage output, but if dealing just a little bit more damage output is going to be critical to killing a unit or not doing so, it could be worth the CP. Secondary objectives next, and currently in Nephilim, I feel like the Chaos Space Marine ones are generally pretty mediocre. I'd argue that the Long War is perhaps the most usable generic one. One victory point per unit killed on objectives is usually going to rack up over the course of the game, and two victory points to try and take objectives that your opponent was holding at the start of the turn. I feel like that one, particularly with armies with multiple small units, is generally going to be racking up to a fairly reasonable score over the course of the game, though it will be one that you're very unlikely to ever max out. Perhaps not a terrible one for a fallback option if things don't jump out though. The other nicer one is for the Dark Gods. This one allows you to dedicate various table quarters to your favourite deities with infantry or biker actions, though I feel like the way that the rules fall, you're probably going to be better just taking Raise the Banners out of the generic list more times than you're likely to take this. Rise of Glory is the other one with killing things with Chaos Heroes. I do think it's a bit low yield though, unless you've got a whole ton of Smash characters and relevant targets in the opponent's army. The Legion specific secondary objectives I feel are a bit hit and miss. A lot of them are just flat out terrible. I'd say that these three help out a bit though, and are all good reasons why their various armies are maybe doing a bit better. Creations of Bile get specimens for the spider, this one just rewards you killing things in melee, ideally characters and monsters, and aligns with exactly what you wanted to do anyway most of the time, particularly if the opponent's got a lot of units or a lot of the relevant targets. Exalt the Dark Gods is the word bearer one which allows you to do actions in the centre board, and you can have them done by Dark Apostles and Masters of Possession as well, or units with icons. Fairly achievable, and perhaps particularly so if you've got some very tanky units like Terminators pushing up into the centre. Finally, out of the better ones, I feel that Dispor Dominions for Black Legion is kind of interesting enough. Infantry or bikers can do enemy turn actions for 4 victory points each on objectives outside your deployment zone. The units would have to survive the enemy counter attack, and I feel like again it's usable enough, but has some strong competition for taking Raise the Banners, which I feel like most of the time it's usually going to get you a similar or better result. Overall though, probably a weaker section of the Codex. Chaos Marines might often have to fall back on the generic book ones, which can be a bit hit or miss depending on how much your opponent's army gives up. Next up, and a rather big part of the Codex, are the various legions that you can pick. These are perhaps a lot more meaningful than some of the choices in other Codexes, like Eldar Craftworlds or Tauceps. Each Chaos Legion not only has its trait, but also its own secondary objective. 
choice of six warlord traits, six relics, and around eight stratagems. A couple of the warbands have a few fewer picks. Besides Red Corsairs, at least within the Codex, I have made their own video on each one of these, so feel free to check those out if you'd like a bit more of an in-depth look. I'm just going to skim over a few of the better options today. Currently, with the relative strength of the different legions, it does seem that the strongest ones at the moment, at least at top levels of play, appear to be Emperor's Children and Creations of Bile. They do seem to be a cut above the rest performance-wise. Chaos Space Marines have won a whole bunch of big tournaments since the book came out, but the vast, vast majority of them have been from these two sub-factions. I'd say literally all of the rest have their own interesting tricks and powerful options, particularly World Bearers and Black Legion are very strong, but it does seem that these guys might be some of the top ones right now. Emperor's Children have a fair bit going for them. They get Troops Noise Marines, which is really quite powerful. Objective secured powerful ranged troops with great blast masters, and they can move around a bit more freely, ignoring the movement penalty. Their Legion trait can be good for ignoring modifiers with things like dense cover, and also things like advancing melter weapons and stuff, and an extra bit of AP here and there really doesn't hurt either. Lucius the Eternal is a pretty solid Chaos Lord, perhaps the best Chaos Lord out of any of them in the Codex, unless you're counting Abaddon. He's very good in melee, with a damage 3 power sword against good opponents, plus a really powerful combination of fights first and making the enemy fight last, meaning that he is going to get to strike his blows before the enemy most of the time. I feel like most of their relics and warlord traits are kind of so-so, but the Emperor's Children's stratagems are very, very good indeed. I've got a character one for fighting last, which again is great for dominating combat. A really good one for a very long charge, either auto-advancing 6 inches, which you could then charge from with the prayer, or making a 6 plus d6 inch charge, also very long. Add that to a whole bunch of decent melee buffs, and building around Slanesh, which is arguably the best out of the gods rules-wise right now, and overall they've got a lot going for them. Creations of Bile gets to fight in death after they've fought, really nice with the Chaos Space Marine Codex's main focus on good melee units, and it does mean that they can counter enemy melee armies quite well, often hitting them in your own turn, and then hitting them just as hard in the enemy turn when they try and kill you back. They also have a small increase in speed and strength, a handy advance and charge stratagem, and a decent secondary objective in specimens of the spider. Also strong, and I'd say really not too far behind the top dogs are the Black Legion and the World Bearers. They've both got very good win percentages, but not very many event wins. Perhaps generally doing a little bit better in smaller tournaments where they're not fighting the absolute apex predators of the meta all the time. For the Black Legion, Abaddon himself is certainly a great draw. Getting four rerolls to hit and wound on any one core unit is big, never mind his own powerful melee stats himself. They also have a pretty solid Legion trait with extra damage against the closest target. A one command point option to borrow another legion's trait for a unit a turn, maybe something like the Red Corsair's Advance and Charge, and quite a nice relic in the Cloak of Conquest, giving out some objective secures to Chaos's favourite top units. Their legionary stratagem for turning off Obsec for a bit is also very helpful to convert some CP into victory points. The World Bearers just have generally strong things all around, an absolutely great legion trait with re-rolling hits on the first round of combat, plus some protection against mortal wounds, a good bit of extra damage and durability there plus a better Dark Apostle that can cast two prayers a turn, very handy, and gives them massively more utility. Demonkin synergy with things like that Master of the Union Warlord trait, a bunch of strong character upgrades, the Hexagrammatic Ward stratagem, and a decent secondary. Finally, for the others, which would rank at the moment a little bit below the top dogs, we have the World Eaters, Night Lords, Alpha Legion, Iron Warriors, and Red Corsairs. Every one of these does have their strong tricks and reasons to play them, but maybe just not quite as much raw power or tricks as the first four. The World Eaters are soon to get their new codex, but while they remain in the fold of Chaos Marines, they just bring lots of melee, extra attacks, troop berserkers with objectives secured are particularly nice, the Red Butcher's Terminators for fighting twice on a top unit is great, though they do lack the very, very good psychic powers that are available in Codex Chaos Space Marines, which is a bit of a downside. Being locked out of some of the other gods, like Nurgle, Zinch, and Slanesh particularly, does reduce some of their options as well. The Night Lords mainly have leadership shenanigans, a fairly solid morale debuff on top of an extra plus one to wound against things that get below a leadership threshold, plus a few nasty dirty tricks in combat, things like preventing fallback for enemy infantry, Fox Stream to turn off auras, and a fight's last warlord trait, presumably on a scary character. I feel like they're not terrible overall, but they're really hampered against lots of armies that have very good leadership. Things like Custodes and Necrons just really aren't going to care about them anywhere near as much as some of the lower leadership armies, things like Orcs. Alpha Legion and Iron Warriors are perhaps a bit more limited, they tend to be quite ranged focused. Alpha Legion gives you a minus one to hit at longer range, 
plus some shenanigans with things like redeployment and pre-game move, hopefully aiming to get the enemy fighting on the back foot, plus a nice objective secured warlord trait, and the conceal stratagem to protect an important unit from a shooting phase. A lot of their options are individually really quite powerful, but maybe lack some of the raw strengths and extra bits that the generic codex doesn't do, that a few of the other legions bring perhaps. The Iron Warriors are perhaps the most dedicated ranged legion, they get to ignore cover with their shooting attacks and turn off enemy wound rerolls. Other highlights include a minus one damage stratagem, quite nice for terminators and things like that, and plenty of options for buffing things like vehicles, demon engines and obliterators, all of which I think would be a lot more powerful if those data sheets were a bit more powerful themselves. I do quite like their Techno Venomous Mecha Tendrils relic as well, they make a Warp Smith into a weirdly crazily dangerous melee character. Finally we've got the Red Corsairs, the Chaos Pirates are maybe a bit simplistic, they don't really have all that many rules, and basically just feel like the warbands that you bring to get advance and charge across the army, and they don't have all that much else going for them. Getting into combat at faster is definitely very helpful, but compared with the other legions it just feels a bit lacking, particularly as plenty of the others can also access advance and charge from that Slanesh prayer. Overall at tournaments and things, the top four tend to be the most commonly played at big events, all of which are used in pretty high numbers. Maybe make use of some of the same strong data sheets from army to army, but they do push you in different ways of play. So, having talked about the majority of rule sections in the codex, let's talk data sheets and units. We'll start out with the various different squads, then go through the vehicles and move on to characters. For the Chaos Space Marine squads, let's start out with the troops, and here we've got four options Legionaries, Cultists, and Accursed Cultists within the codex, and also Traitor Guardsmen from their Kill Team data sheet. I'd argue that Games Workshop has balanced the troop section actually fairly well for Chaos Space Marines. I think all of these are very usable, but maybe just not hugely stand out compared with units in the Elite slot, for example. A lot of people tend to take the bare minimum of troops and then load up on the other goodies like Elites and Characters. For the standard Legionaries, they're solid enough all-rounders, likely best in small units of five. If you want to, you could give them things like the Balefire Tome for an extra Psychic cast, maybe something like Prescience, or combine it with the Mark of Slanesh for Delightful Agonist, and then they could do something useful while they're also holding down those points. For a fun combat build, you could build big with the Mark of Corn melee with them, get them the Corn Mark and Icon, and have a whole truck load of Strength 5 AP-2 attacks slamming into the enemy. Cultists are the bargain basement troops of the Codex, just 50 points for the squad means that they'll fill the troop slots for the least investment possible, allowing you to focus on other things, and they can also do an equally good job of sitting on an objective out of line of sight, maybe doing actions like raising banners if necessary. The other two units maybe feel like upgrades to the generic cultist squad if you want to actually have them do a little bit more in-game. The accursed cultists are fairly cheap at 75 points for the base squad, and they have a bunch of advantages including regenerating fearless cultists, and they also have some melee threat with those big torments. For any of the various cultist centred buffs in the codex, these guys are likely the best recipient. Finally, there's a Traitor Guardsman for 60 points for the unit. They're basically, if you want cultists but are willing to spend a little bit of points on them, getting you three different special weapons and a 5 plus flak armor save, genuinely making them just a little bit more of a threat and decently more durable. I feel like if you can spare the 10 points, they're a pretty reasonable upgrade, but not so good that it's mandatory to spend them. Moving on, let's talk about some of the squads that are a bit more melee focused. And these guys I'd rate as some of the best battle line damage dealers out of the whole book. Most lists tend to include a fair number of the units of the top four, Terminators, Chosen, Possessed and Warp Talons, all of which are just generally quite efficient units, either just on their raw profiles or by being some of the best targets for the very good buffing abilities. Terminators seem to be near enough auto include in a whole load of Chaos Space Marine units at the moment, a really strong linchpin units to build around, usually with a bunch of stacking durability boosts, illusive supplication, delightful agonies, the black rune of damnation, a mutated invigoration, and then pact of flesh to heal any of them that do manage to die, and you've got a unit that's not going to die without an inordinate amount of firepower being thrown their way. Allows you to dominate one section of the board, and of course any damage boost that you can add into all of that will mean that they can actually kill some things pretty well while remaining very very tough. Chosen, I feel, maybe are just a tiny bit behind Terminators in efficiency. They are cheaper than Terminators, but getting the worst save and a bit less shooting power, I think, does hurt them a bit. Plus, barring one or two models in the squad, not being able to take a lot of power fists isn't the most helpful for dealing with heavy targets. Still, though, very usable indeed. They can get the icon of the god that they're dedicated to, and plus have that fun rule where if you kill something, then you trigger their wanton rules early. Possessed are just generally efficient melee powerhouses, Fast with a 9 inch move, tough with 3 wounds at toughness 5, 
and dangerous combat with strength 5 and damage 2. I really like any buffs that you can give to them, they are a bit more limited as their demon kin. Things like veterans of the long war for a plus 1 to wound though can go down quite well, and they can be a squad that can bear the black rune. Against the possessed, the warp talons are fairly similarly costed, they basically trade off a bunch of durability for a bit more speed, a fly keyword and a flurry of damage 1 attacks rather than damage 2. Again they're pretty nice with veterans of the long war with those wound rerolls that they get with their claws, I've got a fun ability to try and lock foes in melee, which can be very disruptive. I think the main challenge for them is trying to keep them alive while they're going about what they do. Otherwise, a bunch of the rest I think is still very usable, just maybe not quite on the same level. Raptors are fast-moving skirmish infantry that provide a leadership debuff, can be okay for doing actions and things, and can be alright in Night Lords with their synergies. Bikers are fairly fast and can hit quite hard with a mark of corn with a bunch of strength 5 AP-2 melee, probably a little bit over-costed overall though I think. Plague Marines from the Death Guard Codex are pretty tough. Generally, I consider them more of a melee threat than a ranged threat, given that all their gear is free, and they've got some very nice combat weapons that they can take. I feel like they are a bit less efficient, though, when they're not in Death Guard, and losing objectives secured, and their contagions of Nurgle. Corn Berserkers are perhaps a bit similar. They're okay for standard Chaos Space Marines, with a whole bunch of attacks and decent AP, but they're just an awful lot better in World Eaters, as they actually get their Legion trait for the extra attack, plus filled troop slots and are objective secured as well, and a quite nice jumping out of rhinos. Finally, for combat squads, spawn are fairly cheap and expendable. If you've got 25 points left, then one of those can be quite nice, just for an individual annoying thing to push on an objective. Their regeneration rule can be pretty frustrating as well, if they wind up fighting a small enemy squad. A lot of units just won't be able to kill a spawn individually, unless they roll fairly high, due to their wounds pinging back and them healing their taken damage. Overall, out of all of these, I'd probably be wanting to build around the top four most, but I think that any of the others are pretty usable in maybe just like one or two units per list. Moving on to range squads, there aren't quite as many options on offer. Probably out of this selection, I'd say perhaps the best are the Noise Marines and the Rubric Marines, though even then, Noise Marines are a lot better in Emperor's Children than elsewhere, particularly because the Emperor's Children Legion trait that they get allows them to move and fire with the Great Blastmaster, which I think is the single biggest draw to take in the unit. Otherwise, you could think about building out with Sonic Blasters and using that Mortal Wound Stratagem, excruciating frequencies with Emperor's Children, and they're not even too bad in melee, particularly with the Power Fist and ignoring penalties, plus hitting on a 2. A bit less good for the other Legions though, I think. Rubric Marines though, I think are pretty usable for just about any Legion, very nice damage outputs with taking max warp flamers with let the galaxy burn. They're reasonably tough with all this dust baked in, and they can get in range pretty nicely with warp time as well, double moving them and then unleashing warp fire. Perhaps can struggle with heavy targets without something like veterans of the long war for a plus one to wound, but they'll certainly barbecue enemy infantry very nicely. Havocs I think are kind of okay, they've got core and they've got a flexible choice of heavy weapons, meaning that they're not a terrible unit to buff if you've got rerolls going. I'd say that most of their heavy weapons are very usable, probably out of any of them the heavy bolter is a bit lacking compared with the rest though. I've seen a few people use them with slanesh marks for the auto 6 damage stratagem, not too bad if you're packing a bunch of last cannons or missile launchers to pretty reliably punch through some big numbers. Finally, Obliterators maybe feel like they're one of the ranged units that's on the cusp of being good, but just a little bit over costers. They do cost 90 points per model, but each one is very big and tough and can teleport into battle. Their ranged guns will be effective against any target that you point them at, but just aren't super effective against any one thing. You could either use them as individual ranged deep strikers to be disruptive and maybe score things like behind enemy lines, or potentially try and make them work in Iron Warriors or something, maybe with a Master of Possession for Pact of Fleshing them back onto the board, or Warp Marks for plus one to wound on their guns. I feel like these guys maybe just have fewer stacking synergies that you really want to put on them compared with all the melee stuff though. Not terrible, but usually going to be an addition to the main focus of the Codex, rather than the sort of thing that you'd want to spam. Vehicles next, and I would unfortunately rate most of the Chaos Space Marine multiple as being broadly a bit underwhelming within the Codex. Not a lot of vehicles tend to make it into top tournament lists, perhaps the main exception to that being Iron Warriors, who do have a fair few more synergies to support them. Just on their raw data sheets and being useful to most legions though, I feel like perhaps some of the strongest ones are the Rhino and the Venom Crawler. The Rhino just being a nice cheap solid transport for delivering things like Berserkers, Chosen or Cult Marines into battle. Chaos Marines have quite a lot of slow moving units that deal reasonably good damage and the Rhino can generally help with that, plus also provide a little bit of extra durability. Venom Crawlers are also a relatively common sight as well, cheap demon engines with generalist damage output, 
a lot of damage to her stuff that's good at killing space marines and as well as being fairly cheap and effective they also can help out your psychers cast nearby the chaos psychic being rather good otherwise for a few of the more interesting data sheets i feel like the vindicator is not too bad either as a relatively cheap and tough distraction d3 plus 3 shots at strength 10 ap4 and damage d6 will usually leave a mark and they are at least a little bit less swingy than they used to be the Dreadclaw Drop Pod is a pretty interesting 4 to one for delivering Alpha Strikes with Cult Marines like Noise Marines or Rubrics. From then it can be a good nuisance unit even after the Alpha Striking is done. And I feel like the Chaos Contemptor Dreadnought is still pretty interesting as a decent core firepower choice. A whole bunch of Volkite shots with some mortal wounds plus maybe some Cyclone Missile Launchers. Though they do put even more stress on the command points that you often want to spend as Chaos Space Marines with all the good character upgrades. Otherwise, let's talk through the rest of the vehicles, which I think are a bit less standout. Again, most of them not unplayably bad, but in general aren't going to make their way into most competitive lists. First up, I thought we'd throw in the Noxleth Crown here as well. That one isn't too bad as the Chaos Fortification. It's got an expanding aura of imbals and can allow you to do some actions for command point farming if it makes sense. Maybe a little bit matchup specific though. The imbal aura could be quite big if you're playing against a really big shooting army. A bit less good if you're playing combat stuff. The Forge Fiend has kind of okay damage 3 firepower, okay against elites, maybe a bit better in Iron Warriors where they've got a few more things to make it better. The Chaos Decimator is a slightly pricey Forge World one, that one allows you to spam out a whole bunch of mortal wounds at range with those soul burners. Definitely charged at a premium for that, but the fact that it can just lay waste to some units, no questions asked, is a rather nice thing to have in the box of tricks. The Chaos Leviathan Dreadnought, again from the Forge World Imperial Armor Compendium, is a solid enough damage dealer. An okay defense with a 2 plus save and armor of contempt. I feel like maybe the most attractive thing about it is the Grav Flux Bombards at the moment. They're fairly brutal against high save things with their damage 3. The Terex Pattern Termite Drill allows you to deep strike infantry and deliver them with some solid melee against tanks. I'd say it probably loses out to the Dreadclaw Drop Pod though, not allowing you to deep strike turn 1 if you want to. The Mauler Fiend again is kind of similar to the Forge Fiend. Not terrible for the cost and fairly threatening melee against heavies. Again, just maybe doesn't have the numbers to be massively stand out though. The Hell Drake has fairly bad damage output, though it does have some utility in zooming around the board at high speed and hitting things that the enemy doesn't want to have you hit. I'd take the Bale Flamer on it as it seems a lot better than the Auto Cannon, but I feel like you're paying a big premium for the speed there. The Defiler, I think, is just a little bit overcosted to be honest. Again, not dreadfully terribly so but enough that you probably don't want to take it compared with the other demon engines. The Predator tanks have gained Toughness 8. Currently the Destructor one is just flat out worse than the Annihilator for some reason. They gave that the Soul Shatter last cannons at least, but still again, it's still in the area of just about scraping by and not super, super good. Land Raiders gains Toughness 9 and again the Soul Shatter last cannons. If you want to pay a big premium for a transport to hide something like a big unit of Corn Berserkers in or something, then it's not the worst. It should fairly reliably get them to their target and be very hard for certain opponents to take out. Maybe still the main issue though is that trundling it forward and getting the most out of its transport capacity is going to be at odds with having those guns fire at the things that they need to. And I feel like in the Chaos book you're often just more likely best investing in lots and lots of melee units as opposed to paying massive premiums to get the ones that you do have to the front. The Lord of Skulls is big, tough and dangerous but perhaps not quite enough for almost 600 points. And the Brass Scorpion out of the Forge World Imperial Armor Compendium does feel very, very similar to the Lord of Skulls in raw numbers now. Has some positives and drawbacks, but certainly usable enough for a Forge World Super Heavy. Finally, the Hellbrute is your basic Chaos Dreadnought. Fairly flexible in tailoring for range or melee, and they can take marks as well, like the Mark of Zinch, which can be handy enough on vehicles to nullify a big damage hit. Fire Frenzy is quite nice as well to return fire against the thing that just shot it. Overall, at the moment, I would say it's broadly not the best time to be running a Demon Engine spam army list. I feel that barring a few of the top selections, you could probably afford to drop the vast majority of these Chaos Vehicles points cost at least by a little bit, and just make them compete a little bit better with the Foot Troops options. Lastly, for the data sheets, let's talk through some Lords and Characters. As mentioned earlier on, I do feel like the HQ section really is one of the highlights of the Codex. A lot of really strong picks just off their raw stats, and then some really good Warlord traits and relics to make them even better with. Certainly leading the bunch is Abaddon the Despoiler, with his current rules he's all around awesome for basically every legion. He's got very good melee, particularly if he gives himself his own rerolls. It's hard to kill with that damage cap plus the mark of Zinch, and also helps out with his Warlord traits and own aura abilities to make the Chaos Marines near him fight harder. 
a very, very common pick in competitive Chaos lists. I feel like he's basically never a wrong choice in just about every Chaos army while he still remains 300 points. Otherwise, the Master of Possession, as we've already mentioned, can take Pact of Flesh and other nice psychic powers. Really nice supporting things like Terminators or Demonkin. Quite a nice one to have Delightful Agonies going as well, with that psychic relic to cast another cast. The Dark Apostle is the guy who brings the Illusory Supplication, plus various melee boosts, and very nice for word bearers, as we've mentioned with extra press. The Demon Prince is a great all-rounder, a nice reroll aura, plus a psychic cast, and then lots of options, making it into a combat melee monster. Typically one of the most common builds might be something like Wings, that power that gives you an extra two attacks, reroll hits with one of the Warlord traits, and then Golax the Demon Weapon to auto wound and ignore feel no pain and damage caps. Between that little stack, you're almost certainly going to be doing some major damage to whatever you hit. The Lord Discordant is also quite nice and can be screened behind your own units. Very good for such a big threatening model. It's quick, very dangerous melee. The Bale Flame is nice with Let the Galaxy Burn and likes things like Flames of Spite and the Gorget of Eternal Hates to get the most value out of its many attacks and 2 plus save. Lucius the Eternal I think is particularly nice for the Emperor's Children, a strong Lord choice with fights last and making him fight first as well. It's pretty amazing at killing enemy characters and large units of elite infantry. And finally for some of my favourite picks, the Master of Executions is a pretty big melee character for just 65 points, lurking within the ranks with a big heroic intervention, and getting mortal wounds on a good hit roll. Again, very much likes a lot of the demon weapons, as well as some of the fighty warlord traits. In general, those are some of my favourite options, but just to run through the rest briefly, Arkham World Claimer I think is usable enough for Black Legion. He gives full rerolls out to one unit, which is quite nice, and has a bit of fast melee too. The various Chaos Lords, I think, are a bit behind things like the Demon Prince and Lord Discordant for raw melee threat. They're both a bit tougher and a bit faster, which is really quite nice for combat characters. Perhaps the biggest attractions to the Chaos Lords are that various legions have infantry-only relics, some of which are rather good, and you might want to take a Lord to use those on. The Exalted Champion just feels like a bit of a cut price Lord, trades out a bit of melee stat line for some free war gear. In general, I'd usually want to take the Lord before I take one of those. The Sorcerer, I feel like, often loses out to the Master of Possession for raw value, plus the fact that you can take the Dark Hereticus Discipline in a few different other places in the Codex, things like Demon Princes or Balefire Acolytes. The Warpsmith, I think, is fine for what he does, a plus one to hit on repairing vehicles. It'd be a lot better if the various vehicles would be, and it's particularly nice, though, for Iron Warriors anyway with the Mecha Tendrils Relic. Kind of the Betrayer is okay enough for World Eaters, he gets to fight twice in melee with a whole bunch of AP3 damage 2 attacks. Maybe a bit more of a fun and fluffy choice than anything else. Here on Blackheart gives some chapter master style rerolls out to one core unit within Red Corsairs. Otherwise though I think he's overcosted for what he does. His melee profile isn't outstanding and he costs quite a lot of points. Fabius Bile is weirdly a bit redundant within his own army. He doesn't have terrible melee in his own right, but it's not enormously standout. His main issue is that he wants to try and augment a unit that doesn't have a mark, and it usually just makes sense to buy the unit a mark anyway, because it gets you better buffs than he can give you. A bit weird that Creations of Bile are such a powerful army right now, but Bile is usually nowhere to be seen in their army lists. Cypher is an agent of chaos that can bring some okay pistol shooting, and is kind of annoying to kill. Perhaps one of the biggest values things that he has is messing with enemy command point regeneration, quite a common thing throughout various competitive armies in 40k. With so many other good HQ choices though, I feel like he's rarely going to be one of the ones that you want to include in one of the precious slots, where he can bring so much other good stuff to the table. Finally, the Cultist Dark Commune are kind of halfway between a Sorcerer and a Dark Apostle, one spell and one prayer, though from a limited list, and not particularly tough if the enemy does manage to hit them with some small arms fire. I feel like how good they are is maybe a bit tied to a cursed cultist. If you are running a couple of big units of them, then they're perhaps reasonable enough. Otherwise, probably leave at home for some of the main Chaos Space Marine characters. Overall, though, definitely a very solid section. Quite a lot of the Chaos Space Marine lists seem to want to build around a single battalion to save those CP for relics and warlord traits. It often seems to be a decision between things like a Master of Possession and Dark Apostle, plus Demon Prince and Lord Discordant, and then you have to drop one of those four selections. Abaddon the Despoiler often makes an appearance as well, though in a Supreme Command attachment, so he won't be fighting for slots. Finally, while we've talked about all the units in the Codex, let's touch on allies. I think in general in 40k, for the most part, you don't usually want to use unrestricted allies if it's going to make the difference of secondaries and their wanton rules. 
though maybe for the Chaos Space Marines, those two rules are just a little bit less vital than it might be for certain other armies in the game. In any case though, for Agents of Chaos that don't break your army rules, you can have 25 points for your power level of Allied Chaos Demons if you want. Currently at time of recording, it often brings a pretty big power boost to the army, particularly taking the undercosted Zinch Flamers, and maybe a Herald Psyker to back you up with some massive Mortal Wound Witchfires. Games Workshop have all but confirmed that the Flamers of Zinch are going to get nerfed in the next balance pass though, so I maybe wouldn't rush out and buy loads of them. Otherwise, Allying Demons could be interesting for things like Bloodthirsters, which are quite strong in their own right, Bloodletters for some potential short charges, maybe coming off a Warp Locust like a Master of Possession, Forward Deployment Nurglings to take the midfield straight away, or those Zinch Psychers that we mentioned with the big Witchfires. Otherwise, to not break army special rules, you could take Chaos Knight Dreadblades along. I think a lot of people quite enjoy taking one big allied Chaos Knight just for the fun factor. Things like the Abominant are reasonably strong just off their own profile, that one being particularly tanky with a 5 plus feel no pain from a psychic spell. Probably for the most competitive choices though, generally taking the smaller war dogs is a bit more useful. They depend less on the big synergies that you need from relics and warlord traits that Chaos Knights can't get when they're allies. And I think in particular things like a trio of Wardo Executioners with the Auto Cannons or the Brigands with the Melter and the Chain Cannons can be okay and provide some solid firepower and mobile obsec to a Chaos list. Definitely not mandatory as taking the detachment of Super Heavy Auxiliary would cost you 3 CP and that's going to detract from how many Relics and Wardo traits you can bring but certainly a usable option. Otherwise another interesting way that you can ally Chaos in could be by using the Disciples of Bellacore one way in the Demon Codex to ally Demons and Chaos Space Marines within the same army list, giving a few shadowy benefits to each of them. You do pass up a lot of the Legion specific goodies which are very nice, plus relics and World War traits and things. I feel like in general the Chaos Space Marine contingent of the army is going to feel a touch on the lackluster side, but I guess could still be interesting enough with things like that shrouded step to teleport units around the board. Melikor himself is a bit of a beast as well, who is quite nice. But in general, I feel that either running pure Chaos Space Marines or pure Chaos Demons is largely going to be the way to go, unless you just want to try and make it work for the fun factor. Overall, probably strongest allies at the moment are the Zinch Flamers and a Psyker for a couple of CP in a patrol or something, and a few Dreadblade War Dogs could be pretty interesting for a bit of firepower and mobile objective secured. Finally, putting things together, I thought we'd just quickly talk about three different army lists, ones from three different legions that we've talked about briefly on the channel before, just to see how a few top tournament players put all the codex options into action. First up, we've got a Black Legion list, this one by Russell Tassin, who used it to take 13th at the Lone Star Open, only losing one match at an 180 person event. It's a Supreme Command Detachment and a Battalion, Abaddon's the Warlord with all the power that he brings, and in the HQ slot we've got the Demon Prince with Wings, Hellforged Sword, Mark of Slanesh, and Flames of Spice and Intoxicating Elixir, so very big hit melee power there with the Mortal Wounds, plus the ability to not die for one turn when you choose not to. There's then a Lord Discordant with Baleflamer, Technovirus Injector, and Marcus Lanesh. He takes Soul Eater and the Gorget of Eternal Hatred. Soul Eater, one of the Black Legion Warlord traits, which I think allows you to regenerate a few wounds. There's then a Master of Possession with Mark of Zinch, Mutated Invigoration, and Pact of Flesh. I guess he's most likely to be buffing that big unit of Terminators with the Black Rune of Damnation, who also take a couple of Chain Fists, some Combi Melters, and Mark of Slanesh themselves. I suppose with Mark of Slanesh, they could potentially get delightful agonies from the Demon Prince, who would be able to cast it with the mark that he's got. To fill out troops for actions and objectives, there's two cultist mobs plus a legionary squad with bolters. The legionaries in Black Legion could use that deny objective secured stratagem. And then beyond the Terminators, there's a unit of 10 chosen, one of which has a single plasma pistol. And then two units of 5 possessed for some big melee threat. Very nice with the plus one to hit on the charge with Black Legion. And then a small unit of Chaos Bikers, presumably going around and just jumping on objectives and skirmishing with enemy infantry. Definitely showcasing a bunch of the strongest stuff that Chaos can bring to bear. Three enormous smash characters in Abaddon, the Demon Prince and the Lord Discordant. A big tanky Terminator blob with a couple of other fairly tough and threatening units in the Chosen and the Possessed. Next up for a different flavour of Chaos Marines, we've got an Emperor's Children army list. This one we talked about at the time when it won the London Grand Tournament, one of the biggest 40k tournaments around, with 650 people in attendance at this one. As Emperor's Children, all the core and character units must pay for Mark of Slanesh, and I think non-god marked also gets the keyword as well, but not the mark. Again, we've got Abaddon the Despoiler in attendance in a Supreme Command Detachment, 
and then he's backed up with a dark apostle with a rosary supplication and blissful devotion, a lord discordance, this time again taking flames of spite and the mantle of traitors, allowing him to use that fight's last stratagem for free once per game, and a master of possession with Liber Hereticus, this one using pact of flesh, mutated invigoration and delightful agonies, probably throwing most of them at the terminators each turn. Again, we've got a big brick of terminators, ten of them with a black rune of damnation for minus one to wound, they'll be ridiculously tough with the Dark Apostle and the Master of Possession, and they take a bunch of power and chain fists in Emperor's Children, as it makes sense to, as they ignore the minus one modifier. There's also a unit of five possessed and a Venom Crawler, two cultist units to do actions and grunt work, and then representing their legion, there's a whole bunch of noise marines in the troop squads, four units of five of them, each of which take a Blast Master and Power Fist, and no sonic blasters in the unit. Quite an interesting build for them, I thought. The Blast Master's great and basically auto include, but then saving points on the sonic blasters and giving them a bit of melee threat, which they also ignore the modifiers on the power fist as well, so it's pretty threatening. Definitely demonstrates some of the raw power that Chaos can bring, and Emperor's Children have a lot of tricks to make their units a bit better, things like the enormous charge that the Terminators can potentially pull off if they need to, potentially advancing and charging with the Dark Apostle if they choose to switch to that, and using that Emperor's Children stratagem to lock in a D6 plus 6 inch charge and hopefully hit something that's surprisingly far away. Finally, as the other very very strong Chaos Army at the moment, I thought we'd talk about a Creations of Bio list, this one by Zach Nelson who used it to take first at the Harvester of Souls. Again, it's a Creations of Bio Battalion and Supreme Commander, Avedon the Despoiler rearing his head here once more. In the HQ slots this time, we've got the Nurgle Demon Prince with the Sword, Wings, Golax and Hatred Incarnate to re-roll those hit rolls. He should fight horrendously hard with that auto-wounding weapon and potentially also go down swinging due to the creations of Bile Army trait, fighting in death. Again, there's a couple of big chunky units buffing the unit of 10 Terminators, the Dark Apostle and the Master of Possession with similar powers to before. The Master of Possession is a Zinch one with the Eye of Zinch, helping out his casting there. Again, the Terminators are a big brick. These ones are Selesh Marks with the Black Rune of Damnation again. This squad takes a couple of Chain Fists, a couple of Reaper Auto Cannons, and one Power Fist. Otherwise, for grunt work on objectives, there's two Cultist Mobs with Firearms, one unit of Legionaries, which are Mark of Selesh, and the Balefire Tome. I'm going to guess that they're going to be throwing Delightful Agonies at the Terminators each turn, and then rather a lot of Brutal Melee Demon Kin, three big units of five Possessed, all of which are going to be annoying to kill in combat once more due to being creations of bile, and a strength 6 and movement 10 base. Finally, there's a unit of 8 warp talons, again very threatening with the extra strength that the creations get, and even better movement at 13 inches. Finally, there's a master of executions lurking within the ranks, taking the mantle of traitors for once per game epic deeds, all around a good melee threat, and also again can go down swinging. Not bad at all when he's got heroic intervention. Overall, a nice and very brutal melee list with a bunch of scary units going forward, a couple of big character hitters like Abaddon and the Demon Prince, and again, the buffing characters making those Terminators nigh unkillable. So anyway, with a few army lists looked at to give a flavour of the competitive face of the faction, I think we'll leave our overview of Codex Chaos Space Marines there, and all the various options that you can bring to the table. As always with these videos, look forward to hearing your thoughts and feedback in the comments, what's been working for you or not so much for the Chaos Space Marines, and are there any options that you think might be a bit underrated that I should have mentioned in this, or things that you think are a bit overrated and taken too much. If you've enjoyed the video, then feel free to subscribe to Allspets Tactics. I have made really quite a bunch of Chaos Space Marine videos now, so feel free to check them out if you'd like to. I made a focus one in each one of the Chaos Legions, so feel free to give their Legion and Allspets a search in YouTube if you want to see that. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that Allspets Tactics does have a Patreon page as well, and that's what allows me to keep on making videos like this quite so regularly. Making fairly enormous army review videos like this does take a fair amount of time and effort, and if you are enjoying a lot, then any support is massively appreciated. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things come next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with the chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.